Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the Wreath Network on Try Hack Me. Today we're going to be going over Task 37, AV Evasion, Introduction. Uh, and my, the start of my favorite section of this lab. Antivirus evasion is the third and primary teaching point of the Wreath Network. By nature, AV Evasion is a rapidly changing topic. It's a constant dance between hackers and developers, sort of an arms race in that way. Every time the developers release a new feature, the hackers develop a way around it, as hackers tend to do. Every time the hackers bypass a new feature, the developers release another feature to close off the exploit, and so the cycle continues. Due to the high speed of this process, it is nigh impossible to teach bleeding edge techniques and expect them to stay relevant for any length of time. So we are only going to be covering the fundamentals of the topic here. Without further ado, let's dive right in. When it comes to AV evasion, we have two primary types available, on-disk evasion and in-memory evasion. On-disk evasion is when we try to get a file, be it a tool, script, or otherwise saved on the target and then executed. This is very common when working with executables, so .exe files. In-memory evasion is when we try to import a script directly into memory and execute it there. For example, this could mean downloading a PowerShell module from the internet or our own device and directly importing it without ever saving it to the disk. In ages past, in-memory uh, evasion was enough to bypass most AV solutions as the majority of antivirus software was unable to scan scripts stored in the memory of a running process. This is no longer the case though, as Microsoft implemented a feature called the Anti-Malware Scan Interface, AMSI, uh, into well, Windows. AMSI is essentially a feature of Windows that scans scripts as they enter memory. It doesn't actually check the script itself, but it does provide hooks for AV publishers to use, essentially allowing existing antivirus software to obtain a copy of the script being executed, scan it, and decide whether or not it's safe to execute. Whilst there are various bypasses for this, often involving tricking AMSI into failing to load, there, these are out of scope for this room. We're just going to be teaching the basics because we want to be able to give everyone that's doing this lab a nice head start into this aspect of red teaming. In terms of methodology, ideally speaking, we would start by attempting to fingerprint the AV on the target to get an idea of what solution we're up against. As this is often an interactive, so social engineering reliant process, we will skip it for now and assume that the target is running the default Windows Defender so that we can get straight into the meat of the topic. Once we know the OS and AV of the, top, or of the target, we would then attempt to replicate this environment in a virtual machine, which we can use to test payloads against. Note that there, we should always disable any kind of cloud-based protection in the AV settings, potentially by outright disconnecting the VM from the internet, so that the AV uh, doesn't upload our carefully crafted payloads to a server somewhere for analysis, destroying all of our hard work. Once we have a working payload, we can then deploy it against the target. AV evasion usually involves some form of obfuscation when it comes to payloads. This could mean anything from moving things around in the exploit and changing variable names to encoding aspects of the script to outright encrypting the payload and writing a wrapper to decrypt and execute the code section by section. The aim is to switch things around that the AV software or enough that the AV software is unable to detect anything bad. Let's see. So what category of evasion covers uploading a file to storage? on the target before executing it that is going to be on disk evasion there we go what does amsi stand for that is going to be the anti malware scan interface there we go and then what category of evasion does amsi affect that is going to be in memory evasion and there we go that's going to do it for this video I will see you guys next time when we cover task 38, but until then, happy hacking!